So the heavy rocker connoisseur worldwide should know who that is. If not, you're gonna know. They made one album. This band is called Tin House, T-I-N. Um, they're from Orlando, Florida area. I had three members in the band. And Floyd Radford played guitar. Mike Logan played the drums. He was the leader and the voice of the band. Uh, that was Logan. And Jeff Cole played the bass. And what I'm gonna be talking about is what Tin House went through um, to get uh, some stepping stones into the industry, the artists that they met, some of the scum that they did meet also, and uh, why there's greed and selfishness uh, in the industry. And you'll hear about that. But the great thing is that we do have an album of this great band, Tin House. And um, you know, the three members played in the band originally uh, together, and they figured they wanted to go three piece because that was happening. This is 1969 time frame. So down in Orlando, you know, things are moving probably slow. Six months or so after uh, Woodstock, a festival is going on called uh, Winter's End Festival. And March 26, 27, 28th, listen to who played at this festival. Joe Cocker, Sly and the Family Stone, Grateful Dead, B.B. King, Little Richard, Can't He, Gra Grand Funk, The Kinks, Mountain, Ten Years After, Country Joe, Sweetwater, Iron Butterfly, Richie Havens, John Mayle, Ike and Tina, Steve Miller, and Johnny Winter. That is just mind-blowing to think so that's what was going on at that time period festivals like that uh, bands would cross paths and they would meet up and different things but this mixture of bands was playing in Orlando at this time frame 1970 and Tin House was uh, was local and knew some people and they got uh, reference to open up uh, for this festival. 100,000 people were there. It was raining. Uh, it was a lot of mud, similar to like Woodstock, but uh, people had fun. With that, with that music, it's got, just got to be amazing. Uh, just bear with me. I got a lot of notes here. I'm sorry if I'm looking down. Uh, I know it's unprofessional. I can't remember everything. So Tin House played there. The reception was so great, they got three encores. I mean, it's, it was, from what I read, people were just blown away. Johnny Winter was so blown away, he asked them to open up for him in the next few towns that he was playing in Florida. So this whole festival just brought them to another level. I mean, they were a garage band, but now they were something bigger. The phone was ringing off the hook. Uh, they were getting uh, a lot of fame. Uh, notoriety and uh, people wanted them. They were playing farther out in the area. And um, the one thing that's got to mention here is Steve Paul. He was the manager for Edgar and Johnny at the time. And he gave a card to Logan, the drummer of Tin House, said, You know, here you go. It's great, you know, meeting you guys. See you again. Call me, whatever. So, um, Tin House decided to go into the studio and record 14 demos. They were writing their own songs. Uh, had some great ideas. They asked a friend to help manage them. His name was Bruce Behrens. And what wound up happening is the engineer at the studio had some connection with CBS Records, uh, Clive Davis. They sent the tape 
Well, he sent the tape over to Clive, and Clive passed it on to Larry Cohn, the VP of Epic Records, which was part of, of CBS. So while this was going on, and this is recordings and demo tapes, uh, Stephen Paul was visiting Larry Cohn, and uh, they were he was discussing with him with Epic uh, Edgar's first album called Entrance, and they wanted to talk about a record deal, which of course came through, and um, <clears throat> and so Larry Cohn asked uh, Stephen Paul, "Hey, you know, were you playing down in uh, Orlando Festival? Uh, was Johnny down there?" And so Steve says, yeah, why? Um, so Larry Cohn of Epic says, uh, well, there's a band called Tin House that I heard they got some standing ovations. They did really well. And, um, you know, did you hear of them? So, <laughs> so what does Stephen Paul say? Uh, he goes, yeah, yeah, I, I, that's my new group. So Cohen basically said, oh, well, I got the demo. I think it's great. Next thing you know, there's some negotiation going on or some kind of discussion because Stephen Paul calls Logan and gives him the pitch and tells him, you got a record deal, buddy, and you're also getting $250,000 in advance. Now, that's mind-blowing. And why is it mind-blowing? Uh, well, there's a reason to that. <laughs> Tin House, two of the members were still in high school, 16-year-olds. Uh, that was Floyd and also uh, Cole. And uh, Logan was another year ahead. He graduated already. So they had to wait till they finished graduation. So uh, that happened, you know, between March and June, and uh, they, uh, in June, as soon as they graduated high school, they went up to New York, Statsburg, New York, on the Hudson River in 1970 of June. Uh, they lived in a seven, six to seven bedroom house, had a pool that was shared with Johnny Winter, who lived next door. They had about 50 acres on this property. So from here, uh, they embarked down to New York City, CBS Studios in Manhattan to record their debut album. And who who's asked to re record? Uh, a guy named Ricky Zeringer. Okay, you may not know who that is, but that's also Rick Derringer. So you see the connection, Rick, uh, Edgar Winter, Johnny Winter, there's that old connection there, of course. So uh, they finished re the recording in 90 hours, which was the limit, they were told. Um, they, uh, they had about 14 songs in seven days. Johnny Edgar and Rick did contribute to it. Uh, Derringer uh, narrowed it down to 10 songs um, from the 14. And so, you know, this is in the 1970, end of 1970 time frame. Um, but the uh, album was just wonderful. Alma had diversity, had different sound, heavy blues rock, some ballads, honky tonk, funky guitars, overdubs and guitars, great musicianship work. Keep in mind, these are kids playing, 16, 17, 18, 18 years old. Um, they had a song called I Want Your Body that opens up the record. Um, they wrote it back in high school. It's got lyrics like, hey babe, seen you walking down the road, I want that body. They were very embarrassed with it, but the licks were so cool. Um, so they kept it on the album. <laughs> uh, it's kind of discouraging when I listen to it, but uh, hey, whatever. Um, Logan was interviewed um, later on, and I was reading this. I just want to share this quick story. They asked him what was his memory in uh, recording the album in New York City at the CBS studio. So he said, well, he was in the studio, and who walks in is Dino Donnelly from the Rascals. 
and um, he asks for a wood block. So Logan says, hey man, I got it. It's in the storage room upstairs. Let's go. They go, they start digging through, they find the wood block, but they start hearing a bass playing in the next, in the studio. So they're in the storage room and they open up the door and like kids, they're like, holy shit. Um, it was Paul McCartney. He was playing a Fender bass. Logan had to open the door up again and, and go inside. For about 10 minutes, he was sitting there watching Paul play. He was on a, a, uh, a soapbox or some type of milk crate playing. He said the song was just unbelievable. Um, and he said that McCartney looked at him and nodded and was still kept on playing. The song that he was playing was Uncle Albert. So uh, Logan gets to the Dino. They said, we got to tell Rick. They go downstairs to the studio. Hey, Rick, come on upstairs. You know, McCartney's here. And he didn't believe him. They go up with the elevator, open up the door. Paul is there, right there with Linda and the kids ready to get on the elevator to leave. But Linda knows Rick Derringer, and they start talking, and Paul's patiently, you know, uh, eventually he says, you know, you know, I do have to go. It's tea time. So I had to share that story with you. I thought it was really great. Um, so they hit the road. Um, they were got rousing receptions. Uh, they played up the East Coast, Canada. Um, album wasn't out yet, but they were doing this these gigs. They went to Detroit, opened for Alice Cooper. They played at the MC5 Fest uh, tribute for John Sinclair. If you don't know what that is, look that up. And uh, they also played at the Fillmore East with Johnny Winter opening up for Johnny and Buddy Miles in 1970. 17, 18 year old kids. Amazing. Uh, Steve Paul, he was the one getting these gigs going and uh, planning the shows out. They were playing with opening up for Cactus, Humble Pie, Edgar Winters Band. Uh, this was during 1971. Album didn't come out yet. Uh, but Paul, Stephen Paul's objective was to get Radford seasoned to play for Edgar's band. That was his whole goal. Nothing about Tin House. So the tours were still going on. Um, but then Steve Paul decides he wants to do the super group for Johnny and Edgar, you know, Rick Derringer and some other musicians. So uh, that comes about also using Floyd uh, Stafford for guitar work. This doesn't go well with the other players, especially Logan, um, because um, the touring was getting sparse. And um, what had happened was Mountain Leslie West was going on an East Coast, uh, West Coast tour from California down uh, from Seattle or Washington down to uh, California. 28 day tour, 20 shows. Album just came out for Tin House. Great, great timing to do this tour. Would have just catapulted them. Steve Paul says, no, you guys have to go. We're committed to Eggers. Uh, concert in Burlington, Vermont. So that was Squelch. Pissed Logan off. Um, and as you can imagine, started uh, some thinking going on uh, because Edgar's guitarist left uh, and now is a full time position. So Floyd was now promoted and uh, again that was right when Tin House's album came out. So tensions built between Logan and, and Stephen Paul and they're, they're telling him it's a this is a horrible mistake to do this you know this mountain tour is just everything to us. Deaf ears. Um, Logan was told he was not the leader of the band anymore and that's where Logan just said, that's it, I'm out, I'm gone. And he packed up. Um, what Logan found out later, uh, I guess 
short time later that Stephen Paul's signing and management to Epic was based on a lie, all fake, um, and Epic and Larry Cohn wanted Tin House regardless of anything that Steve Paul was going to interfere with. So he just leveraged himself into this deal, as you could see the picture now forming, um, which is just horrific when you think about these poor guys. So um, it was misrepresentation. Um, it was a disaster. Tin House um, decided to add a, you know, tried to get a second guitar and vocals, but the, the band just, just failed. It faded out. Um, the bottom line Steve Paul wanted was to steal Floyd Stafford for, uh, for Johnny and Edgar. Paul went out, um, but Stafford, Floyd, actually plays with Johnny. Uh, between 74 and 76 time frame and he plays on this album the clip you saw in the beginning that's Floyd playing and jamming with Johnny just brilliant brilliant work if you don't have this captured live album get it crank it up it is just so powerful it just makes my hair stand up um, so Floyd also Join Eggers' bands. Uh, he plays on the White Trash album. Listen to that White Trash album. Also, very underrated. Um, but Floyd is his contribution, and you know he was he was brought in and sort of faded out eventually anyway. Um, and he left. Uh, Floyd actually went into the aerospace industry. Logan wound up playing in some bands and went to the film industry to be a key grip. And Cole went on to be a teacher. So that's the story, good and bad, uh, of what happened with Tin House. Uh, I wanted to share that with you. Um, so basically the Tin House album was reissued in 2015. Terrible cover. But um, this is just a... Uh, just a phenomenal album to listen to. I didn't stop, didn't stop listening to it when I got it. Uh, the guitar work, is, like I said, is just mind blowing. The drums, bass, comes with this little insert. This is the story of them. Uh, I use some of these bits and pieces of the story. Uh, some other things, like I said, from Logan's interview, comes with a single, forty-five. Uh, a little EP, two songs unreleased, and two other songs are on here. Um, I hope you got something out of it. Uh, I thought that was really, uh, really uh, a good story to tell. Hopefully, hopefully uh, you might get the album. If not, it's okay. But check out the other ones. Also, this is the shirt my daughter got me, and I'm really proud. This is the Evolution of Man, and at the end, he's Got the guitar playing. Uh, really love this shirt. Very proud of to wear it. That's it, VC. Uh, I got some good stuff coming up again. Stuff you're going to want to see. Uh, so that is the band that uh, that you needed to hear.